In this series, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to strip away all the complexity and hard graft and teach you how to cook amazing food standing on your head. That is amazing. Incredibly tender. From the kitchen novice to the budding chef, I'm going to give you the confidence, the recipes, and the insider knowledge to make you a much better cook. Slice round, wasting nothing. I made my name cooking in some of the world's most demanding kitchens. It's nice. You make it up at the full service. Yeah. In my restaurants, I expect perfection. Every plate has to be worthy of a Michelin star. And every time you make that, you yeah. taste it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day it changes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you some simple and accessible recipes for fantastic food that you can easily cook at home. Mm. Incredible. I'll be holding you by the hand. Just getting better and better and better. Teaching you everything from incredible stress-free dishes, real fast food, and my ultimate feast recipes. This is the only cookery course you'll ever need. Welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, this is my ultimate food on a budget. As a chef, I know it's not what you spend on ingredients, but results on the plate that count. Using cheap cuts and leftovers, and working them hard in the kitchen gives you food in a budget that tastes a million bucks. And I'm going to show you how. First up, my flavour-packed lamb with fried bread. Whether I'm cooking high-end dishes or rustic dishes, trust me, it all has to be impressive. So this lamb dish proves that you don't have to spend a fortune to create delicious food. First off, put the pan on. This is a lamb steak, and it's cut just above the leg, just here, because you can see that delicious bone running through the center. And that's full of marrow, so that just gives the lamb a nice added sweet flavor. Just take your knife, cut through each end. This stops the lamb steak from buckling, so therefore it cooks evenly and colors beautifully. Salt and pepper. Lamb needs quite a lot of help with the pepper, so be quite generous with the pepper. And just pat that down. The pan's just starting to smoke on the outside. Now put the oil in. Get that pan really nice and hot, because this is a cheap cut, so I'm depending on the colour of the lamb steak to really sort of impart a lot of flavour. That's the noise you want to hear. If you can't hear that noise, don't drop the steak in. Put a little bit of garlic in there. Not chopped garlic, just whole cloves of garlic, lightly crushed. Don't even waste time peeling them. In tongs, lift up. That bit of fat around the back, that's on the top of the leg. Tilt the pan and let all that fat render. Rendering is a chef's term. That means melting the fat. It works brilliantly when you're cooking a ribeye as well. Cut it over. Look at that colour there. Beautiful. Now it looks like an expensive cut, and we've got that nice, even sear all over. As it's cooking, just tilt the pan and baste. And basting the lamb steak, just means you're sort of adding all that nice scented garlic olive oil back into the lamb. Beautiful. Now I'll take the lamb out and let the lamb rest. Beautiful. Now for the perfect rustic crouton. So this bread's quite firm, a couple of days old. Just slice it straight down the center. Dice it up. Put it into a bowl. Season it beautifully. From there, I'm going to add some milk. Sounds strange adding milk to a crouton, but it just gives it that nice, rich, creamy texture. And just let that milk sort of absorb into the bread. While that's soaking, I'm going to make the dressing. Go back to that initial garlic that was in the pan. Look at that. Beautiful into the pest and mortar. Anchovies. Anchovies go brilliantly well with lamb. I want that nice, salty, vinegary flavour and a bit of kick. Some capers. The little baby caps. Very sweet. Now, just pound that to a nice paste. That smells incredible. Next, some Dijon mustard. A nice teaspoon and a half in. A little bit of red wine vinegar. Two tablespoons. And then our extra virgin olive oil. Now, it's got that heat in there. It's got that nice roasted garlic, a real hearty, chunky vinaigrette that sort of seeps into that lamb. Some fresh parsley. Crunch up the parsley. 
Delicious flavour. Parsley in. Nice. Now, get your pan hot for the croutons. Olive oil in the pan. Grab the croutons and squeeze all that excess milk out. Not too hard. I don't want them dry. And in. And then just fry them. And the milk inside these croutons give it that nice, spongy, creamy, delicious flavour. That's the colour I want. Nice. Now, take them out and lightly drain them. A little bit of kitchen roll onto the board. Out. And plate them. Just take this amazing vinaigrette and spread it. Get those croutons. Listen to them. Like little boulders hitting the plate. The lamb. Sit that on. Next one. On. The rest of the croutons. On. I use all those little bits. And my chef in Paris would kill me right now if you saw me using those because they're the ugly scraps that customers should never see, but, but they're the best bits. Croutons on. And then just drop that sauce on all those little bits of the lamb. And there, that is a perfect way of taking a cheap cut into the Premier League of dishes. Stunning food doesn't have to be complicated. Keeping it simple produces amazing results and keeps costs down. Here are three more great easy dishes that don't cost the earth but taste absolutely incredible. Starting with roasted mackerel with garlic and paprika. First, make a spicy paste by crushing garlic in a pestle and mortar, along with paprika, sea salt, and olive oil. Spoon the paste onto fillets of mackerel, a great inexpensive oily fish that's really healthy, and leave to marinade. When ready to eat, put the mackerel fillets on a baking tray, skin side up, season, and roast in a hot oven. Next, make a tangy potato salad. For the dressing, mix Dijon mustard, white wine vinegar, olive oil, and saffron. And whisk until blended. Boil new potatoes in salted water. Drain and lightly crush. Add sliced spring onion and spoon in the vinaigrette. To serve, Top the potato salad with the roasted mackerel and drizzle with more vinaigrette. A healthy meal that makes the most of cheap but delicious fish. Stunning roasted mackerel with garlic and paprika. My next brilliant budget dish is pork and prawn balls in aromatic broth. For the pork and prawn balls, in a bowl, add pork mince. Then add finely chopped prawns, diced ginger, and chopped chives. Season and roll into ping pong sized balls. For the broth, heat fresh stock and add star anise, oyster sauce soy sauce and sliced ginger. Gently simmer. Fry the pork and prawn balls in a pan until golden. Then transfer to the bubbling broth. Add handfuls of spinach, then serve. Top with finely sliced spring onions. A gorgeous, healthy dish that uses great value ingredients with amazing results. Pork and prawn balls in aromatic broth, ready to eat in under 20 minutes. An incredibly simple recipe that's perfect for using up leftovers. Easy, arancini, delicious golden rice balls. First, chop mozzarella into small cubes. Then take handfuls of leftover risotto, add a cube of mozzarella, and fold into a ball around the cheese. This dish is perfect with leftover mushroom risotto, but it's great with any risotto. For the coating, 
prep three bowls, one with flour, one with breadcrumbs, and one with beaten egg. Dip each arancini first into the flour, then the egg wash, and finally, the breadcrumbs. Then in a pan, heat the olive oil and fry the arancini until golden brown. Drain and serve simply with lemon. Easy arancini, a delicious, tempting treat that's great for leftovers and cooks in under 10 minutes. Three quick and easy recipes that give maximum flavor for minimum cost. Fantastic dishes that prove you don't have to spend a fortune to eat amazing food at home. Nice. Next, five more of my 100 tips that'll make cooking in the kitchen easier. First up, a great cheap staple, how to cook the perfect rice. Basmati rice, the king of all rices. Light, fluffy, delicious, and I'm gonna show you how to cook it perfectly. Now, start off with 400 grams of rice. Rice in, spot on. So what I'm gonna do now is just rinse off the dust and the starch. Cold water, always, and just rinse the rice. That stops the rice from becoming clumpy in the pan and allows it to become really nice, light and fluffy once it's cooked. Rice into the pan. Now, to make a plain, fluffy rice exciting, we're going to infuse it. Three cardamom pods and just get the pods and just pierce them so it allows all that flavour to come out. Cardamom pods and then star anise. Now, these are beautiful. Whole star anise. It makes it really nice and fragrant. Salt and pepper. A lot easier to season the rice now than it is once it's cooked. You start to break it up when you season it once it's cooked. Now, it's basically one part rice to one and a half part water. 600 mils. Always start it off in cold water. Cold water in. Onto the gas. Lid on. Bring it up to the ball as quick as possible and turn it down and let it simmer for eight to 10 minutes. And that's the secret behind cooking great rice. Allow it to steam as it's cooking. Do not lift that lid up. Lid off. Mmm. It smells aromatic. Basically, all the water's absorbed. The rice has doubled in size and is nice and light and fluffy. Take the star anise out. The cardamom pods, they all should have risen to the top. Pods out. Take your fork, fluff it through. Basically, it just sort of starts to open everything back up. Once you've forked it through, it becomes really nice and light and fluffy. And there. That is perfectly cooked rice. Always make the most of your leftovers. Use last night's rice in stir fries, scrambled up with eggs, or it's simple to make a delicious fresh salad. Remember, a good cook wastes nothing. A great tip for stopping potatoes, apples, and avocados from going brown when cut. Simply cover with water and add a squeeze of lemon. The acidity stops the flesh from oxidizing, which is what causes the color to change. Herbs are great for adding flavor without spending a fortune. To keep them at their best, simply place them in a glass of water and they'll stay fresh for up to a week. And if you've got extra herbs left over, save on waste by making an amazing flavored oil. Place wash and dried stems in a bottle, cover with warmed olive oil, then seal and leave to infuse. Great for salads, pastas, and drizzling on veg. This is my ultimate cookery course. 100 recipes to stake your life on. Later, I'll be showing you an incredible spicy sausage rice that costs next to nothing. Bulky, delicious, and incredibly robust. But first, when you're cooking on a budget, you can still eat fantastic meats. Just make sure you're getting the most for your money. Next up, my shopping guide to buying the best hams, salamis, and sausages. These fine Italian meats are packed with flavor, and a little goes a long way. And nobody knows that better than deli maestro Antonio Saccomani. Uh, born in Italy and uh, start eating Italian food, and I love it. I want to change it for nothing else. That's why I'm fat. <laughs> He's been selling delicious cured meats in the heart of London, Soho, for more than 35 years. This is the best prosciutto 
they come from Italy. This is cured in Parma because it's Parma ham. Divine. People love it and uh, it's wonderful. The fat is good because you make the meat sweet. It should be cut thin like this. There is more flavor. You can eat with melon, with figs, with pears, with everything. Any sweet fruit is good. Mm. It's wonderful. You really enjoy it. When you start eating, you can stop. Wonderful. This is called brisaola. It's a hair cured beef. Come from uh, North Italy, Valtellina. It's so different from pork. There's no fat at all. It should be no fat, otherwise it tastes greasy. It's good when it's very dry and you slice it thinner. You just eat it like that. Or you can eat with a bit of rocket and you shave some parmesan on top. I love it. A bit of lemon if you like, or olive oil. It's delicious. This is called felino. For me, it's the best salami. Take the name of a little place near Parma, and there's a country salami. Very nice, it's one of my favorite, because it's not too spicy, just meat flavor, just salt and pepper. I love it, I can't resist. Mm. When I take some meat home, I don't need nothing else, especially in the evening, just meat with a melon, or figs or whatever, a few slices of bread, a couple of glasses of wine. That's my meal. You don't need nothing else, you know. You, you're happy. Mm. Antonio's right. Incredible Italian hams and salamis are fantastic in simple salads, sandwiches, or even eaten by themselves. And you don't need much to make an impression. There's an amazing selection of delicious meats from around the world that are great to use in the kitchen. Another simple meaty staple that's perfect for quick, easy suppers with a difference are the exotic regional speciality sausages that have such distinctive tastes and are a million miles from the great British banger. Here are four of my favorites that are definitely worth your money. Chorizo from Spain. These have an incredibly deep red color, are full of smoky spice paprika, and are great for stuffing, stews, and paellas. Merguez from North Africa, made from beef or mutton. These cook super fast because of their long and thin shape and can be used in tagines or served with couscous. Fennel sausages from Italy, made from pork and packed with sweet aniseed flavor fennel seeds. These are perfect with pasta or as a topping on a pizza. Finally, jerk sausages from Jamaica, full of blow your head off Scotch bonnet chilies. These are super spicy and great in tangy casseroles or simply sauteed with onions and garlic. Be adventurous with your sausages. Learn about the different flavors, and you'll soon be using them to add extra flavor with ease. For dishes that always pack a punch without costing a fortune, simple and cheap delicious ingredients like sausages are great. And you don't need a lot of them to get stunning dishes that taste incredible. So spend your money wisely, and you can have amazing midweek meals that don't cost the earth. My next recipe is all about great flavors, and it's as cheap and easy to make as it is delicious. Spicy sausage rice. Whatever you're cooking, the secret of making great food is to ensure you lock in every last ounce of flavor in that pan. And this spicy sausage rice does exactly that. Take these spicy sausages and pierce that skin, because I want all that delicious spicy sausage meat out of its casing and you get more flavor from the sausage when you take them out of the casing. Sausage is ready. Turn on the gas. Bread onion, less acidic than a big white Spanish onion and a lot more flavorsome. A tablespoon of olive oil. A tablespoon only because I want all that fat coming out of the sausages to sort of really help flavor the onions. Onions in. And the onions go in first because you can never rush cooking an onion. It's really important to sort of give them five to six minutes in the pan so you can really start to caramelize them. And now for my pepper. Slice around, wasting nothing. I want to see that sort of little core, those pips in the center. No fine diced pepper. The rice is going to be cooking for 20 minutes, so I want the veg to sort of have texture after it's cooked. Pepper's in. A bit of garlic, two nice cloves. Just slap down, off with the shell. 
garlic in. Now, I want to turn up the gas, get the pan nice and hot, because the minute that sausage goes in, everything cools down, and you'll end up boiling the peppers and the onions and the garlic. So heat up to maximum, and then just make a well in the center. In. Now, start stirring quickly. And this is where you get so much more bang for your buck out of the sausages, because the skin's off, and the real flavor of that spicy Italian sausage is going to come through. What's great about this recipe is that you can use any type of sausage to get the flavor and the heat you want. I've gone for the spicy Italian, but it's just as good with merguez or chorizo. A teaspoon of paprika in. Give it that really nice smoky flavor. Rice in. And we're going to sort of basically sear the rice. We call it in the kitchen blasting the rice, where we sort of soak the rice for 30 seconds, and it takes on all that flavor. Next, white wine. So the wine sort of deglazes the pan and washes all that flavor from the bottom of the pan into the rice. Stock in, bring it up to the boil, turn it down, and let it simmer. Mm. Double stock to rice. Turn that gas down and let it simmer for 12 to 15 minutes. And just give it the occasional stir. Keep an eye on it. Now, get ready to finish it. Slice spring onions, dice sweet, juicy tomatoes, and roughly chop earthy, flat leaf parsley. Spring onions in, tomatoes in. Off with the gas. Really important. Otherwise, everything becomes overcooked. Flat leaf parsley in. But look at the volume in that pan now. That is an amazing way to take spicy Italian sausages to a completely different level. Beautiful. Follow my ultimate cookery course, packed with key lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. And you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. Need. Welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right. This is more ultimate food on a budget. Vegetables are such an asset in the kitchen. Healthy, fantastically fresh, and incredibly versatile. And pound for pound, they're so much cheaper than fish or meat. Just make sure you give them plenty of attitude. My first recipe is so quick and easy, but seriously impressive and deceptively cheap. Homemade gnocchi. Making your own gnocchi is so simple to do, yet the results are absolutely stunning. And it's a great way of using up leftover baked potatoes. You can make gnocchi just with flour and eggs. However, the potato gives it that nice, light, sort of creamy, fluffy texture. Just cut them in half, take your spoon, and scoop the inside of those potatoes. I'm using leftover baked potatoes, but this really works as well with leftover boiled potatoes. Two choices. You can get a fork and sort of mash the potato and get it nice and light and fluffy. Or this little gadget, it's called a ricer. I suppose it's a posh word for a potato masher. Just squeeze gently. You can see how nice and light it is, almost like fluffy little strands of potato. You can do this when the potatoes are hot. It'll go through the ricer so much quicker. Just slice that off there. Now, a nice spoon of ricotta in. A little touch of salt and pepper. It's really important to season the mixture as we go along, otherwise the gnocchi becomes really bland. Flour over the ricotta, sieved so there's no lumps. One delicious egg. Give that a little whisk. Now, make a little well in the center. You want a nice, soft, pliable ball of dough. Give that a really good mix. Get some thyme flowers in there. And this thyme is light, fragrant, and it's just a really nice herb. And with the ricotta, it tastes brilliant. Just pick the little tips of the thyme flowers. Next, flour your hands generously and knead the mixture into a dough. Fold in and push. And basically what it's doing is getting it nice and smooth. As it starts to get a little bit wet, and just that, 
a little touch of flour. We want something really nice and soft. Now, don't overwork it. It stops the gnocchi from expanding when it hits the pan. That's exactly what I want. A nice sort of soft, fragrant ball. Cut the ball in half. Lightly flour the hands and just roll it gently. And just think of a, a big, long cigar. The mixture will start getting a little bit sort of wetter, but do not add lots of flour. Now, lightly flour the knife so when you slice the gnocchi, it doesn't stick. Cut the dough into bite-sized pieces. Just take your finger, dip it in the flour and push down. Why? I want my gnocchi to look like a pillow. And for me, the most important part there is that not one of them are identically the same shape. Water on. Bring it up to the boil. A little touch of olive oil in there. Lightly flour your hand. Lift up the gnocchi. In to the rolling boiling water. Turn that pan to stop them from sticking at the bottom. And let them simmer. And they start to sort of tell you they're cooked when they start floating. Get a pan on. Get that nice and hot. Now, they're just starting to come up to the top, and you can continue cooking them like that. I like blanching them in the water, taking them out, and then frying them. To study the gnocchi, heat olive oil in a frying pan. Gently lift up and look. They've doubled in size. Drain it, get rid of the excess water, and straight in to the hot pan. Mm. This is where they start to take on a completely different texture, nice crisp. Sauté texture on the outside. Gnocchi loves fresh pepper. So, pepper in. And you'll see, as I start turning them, I've got this really nice little sort of brown colour. And they're almost puffing up now, like little parcels. So I want them nice and sautéed, both sides, but light and creamy in the centre. Fresh garden peas. In. And the butter gives it that really nice sort of Benoisette flavor on the end. Beautiful. Put a little bit of fresh thyme over the peas. And then finally, I want to lift it up. Fresh lemon. Zest the lemon over. So, it smells incredible. And then finally, seal the deal with a touch of grated parmesan cheese. Give your veg some attitude and you'll get amazingly elegant dishes on a budget that are always guaranteed to impress. What more do you want from great cooking? Cheap to make, easy to cook, and absolutely stunning. <laughs> cooking great food doesn't mean you have to spend a fortune on fancy equipment. Get some basic essentials, and you'll be set in the kitchen. Saucepans. I mean, basically, you don't need a collection of 10. All you need, really, is two. A medium-sized one, followed by a large one. A small pan's great for sauces, heating liquids or rice. Whereas your large pan gives you space, perfect for pastas, stews, or when you're cooking in bulk, which keeps costs down. Made from copper to stainless steel. Find what's right for you and always get a lid, which helps heat the pan up as quickly as possible. And the secret behind a great saucepan is the heavier the bottom, the more heat it will conduct. The thinner the bottom, the more chance you've got actually burning your food. Buy the best saucepans you can afford. Take good care of them and they'll last you years, saving you money in the long run. Amazing recipes don't necessarily have to include meat. Cooking vegetarian dishes will reduce your food bills without compromising on taste and flavour. Here are three more recipes to satisfy even the keenest carnivore, like me, that will max out on veg and won't break the bank. Starting with spicy black beans with feta and avocado. First, in a pan, heat olive oil. Add chopped onion and fry until soft. Then finely slice garlic and chilli. Add cumin, cinnamon and black beans, then combine. Cook together until deliciously soft. These small beans come dried or in tins and are a great cheap ingredient to make dishes more substantial. To serve, dollop the black bean mixture on crunchy tortillas. Top with cube ripe avocado, chopped fresh coriander, and crumbled salty feta cheese. Spicy black beans with feta and avocado, a dish that's filling, frugal, and tastes fantastic. 
My next great veg recipe is leek and greer rusty with fried eggs. In a hot pan, sweat shredded leeks along with a knob of butter and season. Next, great parboiled potatoes and greer, a hard Swiss cheese with a great nutty flavour. Then combine with the softened leeks. In a pan, heat oil and a little butter. Spoon in the potato, leek and cheese mix. Cook gently until golden and crisp underneath. Then slide onto a plate, flip over and return to the pan to finish cooking. Finally, for the perfect topping, fry two eggs and place them on top of the rosti. Top with fresh tarragon. Leek and Greer rosti with fried eggs, a simple but substantial dish that makes the most of hearty root veg. A dish that takes as much time to write on a blackboard as it does to cook. Chickpea, cumin and spinach koftas with tahini dressing. In a blender, put tin chickpeas, cumin seeds, paprika and turmeric, and blitz to a paste. Next, wilt spinach in olive oil and chop finely. Then add to the chickpea mixture. Sprinkle in gram flour, made from finely ground chickpeas, then shape golf ball sized chunks of the mixture using a spoon and rest in the fridge. When ready to cook, heat oil in a frying pan. Shall I fry the koftas until golden brown on all sides. Then rest them on kitchen paper to absorb any excess oil. For an easy dipping sauce, mix yogurt with a dollop of tahini and a squeeze of lemon. Then stir in freshly chopped coriander. A mouth-watering dish that's perfect for sharing. Chickpea, cumin and spinach koftas with tahini dressing. Three amazing recipes with fantastic veg. Proof that even if you're cooking on a budget, you can still eat like a king. Incredible. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. This is how to cook amazing food on a budget. Next up, my guide to getting the best ingredients for your money. My shopping mantra is simple. First, rely on your senses. Make sure whatever you're buying that it looks, smells and really feels good. Second, is to recognise that knowledge is crucial. The more you know personally about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. So, don't be scared. Ask lots of questions and learn. And when it comes to buying potatoes, a great ingredient if you're cooking on a budget. One greengrocer who can always spot a dud spud is Borough Market Royalty, Fred Foster. It's all about flavour. It's all about choosing the right variety for the right dish. He's been selling top quality veg for over 15 years and really knows his King Edwards from his Duke of York's. Basically, there's two types of potatoes. There's early season and a main crop potato. Early season is basically around about May time. You can't store them. They cannot be stored. You have to buy them and use them within two to three days. When you're buying an early season potato, you must avoid green looking potatoes at all costs. It really is important. And the way you can tell that is if you just brush the potato, the skin comes off really, really easy. And then you want, you want a yellowy or whitey looking potato. The new season potato is a superb potato to use. New season types include Rocket, Home Guard and Maris Bard, but my favourite is the classic Jersey Royal. It has a delicate sweet flavour, it's packed with vitamin C and is great in salads or simply boiled and mixed with olive oil and fresh mint. Jersey potatoes, early crop, are phenomenal. Look at that. Um, <laughs> keep the skin on, it's really important. Just wash it, boil it. It's a beautiful, beautiful potato, and, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about, I know it's a potato, I know it's a bit sad, but we're talking about flavour. Right, then what is a main crop potato? It's the crop that is grown specifically for nine months of the year use. When you're looking at a main crop potato, you need to see that the, the eyes aren't too large because they tend to go right through the potato. They've got to be firm, it's very, very important. If a potato in any way feels a little bit soft, discard it. Storage-wise, dark place, cool place, 
dry place. And that will last till you eat it. Simple as that. Both early season and main crop potatoes come in two main types, waxy and floury. Waxy potatoes have a smooth, dense flesh, and because they're low in starch, they stay firm when cooked. Types include Anya and Pink Fur, but I love Charlotte, which has an amazing buttery taste and are great sautéed in stews or served whole with roast chicken. Flowery potatoes have a fluffy, dry texture when cooked, which makes them great for mashing, roasting, or cutting into chips. Types include King Edward, whose smooth, creamy flesh is perfect for potato gratins or with rich meats like beef, and Desiree, which have an amazing red skin and are great for baking or as delicious potato wedges. Old-fashioned types, known as heritage potatoes, are now widely available and have fantastic colours and distinctive tastes that are great when you want something different. This one's called Salad Blue. When you cut it, you then see the most amazing colour, and it's perfect. It looks stunning on the plate, a really popular. It's so important when you're going out to pick your potatoes, you already know in advance what you're going to do with that potato. So whether you're going to put it in a salad, whether it's a, a masher or a chipper, or even a baking potato, each variety has a unique flavour. Fred spot on. Whether new season, main crop, waxy or flowery, potatoes are incredibly versatile and packed with great flavour, the perfect ingredient when you're cooking on a budget. Well, how much do I love potatoes? Well, cook them simply, proper flavours, it doesn't get any better, really. Like all chefs, for me, there's nothing better than seasonal produce at its peak. When fruit and veg is fresh in season and fantastically ripe, I can't wait to get back in the kitchen. To get the most out of your cooking, always use ingredients in their prime. My next recipe is a proper British classic that's super simple to cook and costs next to nothing, a delicious apple crumble. Crumbles are the perfect way to use fruit when it's in season. There's lots of it about, it's nice and cheap, but most importantly, the fruit's at its absolute best. First off, I'm going to make a really nice light caramel. Pan on, nice and low. Great two apples. And this helps to almost sort of pure the apple so much quicker. And there's a lot of flavour in the skin, so don't worry about peeling the fruit. Whether it's pears, plums, peaches, flavour's in the skin. Nice. To start the caramel, a couple of tablespoons of sugar. The sugar helps to get rid of the tartness in the apple. A touch of cinnamon. That starts to make it a little spicy. Open up your vanilla and just scrape out all those seeds. Now, this just makes it light and fragrant. All those seeds in to the sugar. When making caramel, be patient and always swirl the dish instead of stirring it. When the sugar goes brown, add the apple. That starts to sort of cool down the caramel, but it gives it a really nice sort of caramelized puree. Apple's almost disintegrating. It smells incredible. Turn the gas down. Slice up two apples. It's a crumble that's got no frills. Straightforward, no faffing around, no peeling of the skin. I want them to sort of stand out from the caramel. Apple's in. Now those nice, thick chunks of apple sort of almost bedding itself into the puree. Dried cranberries gives it that nice sort of shock in the texture. Sweet and chewy. I want it to sort of taste zesty, spicy, so sit the lemon zest on top of your apples and cranberry. Fresh lemon juice over. And that just gives that extra acidic kick. Takes the cranberries, the apples, the caramel, and the cinnamon to another level. Turn the gas off. Just let that sit, and let's concentrate on the crumble. Flour in. A couple of tablespoons of demerara sugar. Sugar helps to get the topping nice and crispy. Butter in. Give that a nice little sort of rub. What we're looking for is like a, a breadcrumb mixture. Lightly season it with a touch of cinnamon. And the demerara sugar sort of helps to get a nice fine crumble mix, and it stops the butter from sort of melting in that flour. So that's the basic crumble mix. But I'm not finished yet. Muesli. Two-thirds crumble, one-third muesli. 
Mix that in. If you haven't got muesli, then crunchy granola works brilliantly too. Lovely. Now, start off in the center and work your way around. I want the crispiness on the top, the puree on the bottom with the caramel, and then the texture in the center. A good tip, turn the gas back on. I want it bubbling before it goes in the oven, because then you've just got to cook the top. So as soon as you see that caramel starting to bubble down the side, in she goes. Let's go. Bake at 200 degrees Celsius for 12 to 14 minutes until golden brown. Smells amazing. Beautiful. Still bubbling. And look at it. A delicious but very simple crumble with apples at their absolute best. Beautiful. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First up, cooking pasta. A great budget basic to keep in the cupboard. It can be easily undercooked or overcooked. Here's how to do it properly. First, water in, nice large pan to make sure the pasta's got sufficient room to cook evenly. Nicely seasoned, absolutely crucial. Olive oil in, that stops the pasta from sticking together. Bring it up to the ball, that's a rolling boil. The secret there, it stops the pasta from sticking together and it gently rolls it around. Now, this is angel pasta, nice thin pasta. Takes three and a half to four minutes. So, into the pan, as it hits the water, it melts, and then you turn it around. Tongs, as that starts to melt, gently twist that into the pan, bring it back up to the boil. If you're bad at timing, then set a timer. Beautiful. To test it, lift the little strand, and you can actually feel it with your fingers. It's still nice and firm. Mmm. Al dente. Not a bite, not a strong bite, but just really nice and firm inside. Definitely not crunchy. And then, into a colander, drain the pasta in a light seasoning, salt and pepper, a tablespoon of olive oil. Mix that through. That stops it from sticking together. And look, there you go. Beautiful pasta, al dente. Mm, cooked perfectly. A tip for making the most of spare bread, Blitz leftovers into breadcrumbs, great for stuffing or crab cakes, or cut into chunks and freeze for perfect croutons on demand, or simply tear and use in a delicious rustic salad. Dried pulses like chickpeas or lentils are great for soups and stews and cost pennies, but don't season them until the end of the cooking or the salt makes them go tough. For perfect boiled potatoes, always start them off in cold water and never boiling water. This way, by the time the centers of the potatoes are cooked, the outside won't be falling apart. And when you're cooking potatoes, always cook extra, so there's leftovers. They're fantastic to have on hand for making my delicious gnocchi and potato rusties or a classic bubble and squeak. <laughs> Follow my ultimate cookery course, packed with key lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking.